Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, James and Matt are off uh, gallivanting around Scotland uh, today, so Richard and I will be running you running you through the show. We are talking to Ben Green from Supermarket Reit, so that will be interesting to hear how they're coping through the uh, economic doom and gloom. Otherwise, it's been a uh, reasonably quiet week on the news front, although we have picked up on a few interesting stories. Uh, notably, an interim report from Next Energy Solar Fund and, of course, the uh, autumn statement. So for uh, Next Energy, we can see that this has been a, uh, a tough period for the company, and uh, this reflects the struggles of the broader renewable infrastructure sector as well. Discounts have been widening pretty consistently throughout the year as capital has flown into more defensive sectors of the market. However, we have seen plenty of managers come out and say that these discounts don't really reflect the underlying quality of the assets, something that we certainly agree with, uh, especially given the inflation-linked revenues of many of these companies. At 19%, Next Energy's discount is a bit below the sector average of uh, minus 25%, but it's still somewhat hard to fathom at these levels. One silver lining, at least, is that as uh, inflation and yields have begun to soften, you can start to see a uh, small recovery at the bottom right of the graph. So hopefully we begin to see some sort of sustained move upwards over the next few months. From the company's interim report, we saw that shares fell 7% and the NAV was down 5 over the six-month period, which was uh, predominantly due to rising discount rates, bearing in mind that this was on uh, well, up till September 30, so before we started to see yields uh, beginning to trend back down. The company's been uh, proactive at trying to move the dial on its discount, introducing a capital recycling program, which completed its first move over the period with a uh, £15 million sale of the Hatheridon uh, Ready to Build Solar Project. This was uh, at an impressive 100% uplift to the, the carrying value, although as it was a construction project, we shouldn't expect to see similar uplifts from, uh, from further sales. But uh, obviously it's a step in the right direction for justifying the company's nav. The proceeds were used to reduce the company's short-term debt, uh, which is a positive move given the market's current view on the, on the cost of leverage. So certainly moving in the right direction there. Now, touching briefly on the uh, autumn statement, there were uh, a few headline grabbers here, including the national insurance cuts and uh, the alcohol duty freezes, which I'm sure a few people will be happy about. Um, however, the most notable thing for the uh, investment companies is the government's intention to resolve the, the cost disclosure issues, which have, have plagued the sector and contributed to the tide of money flowing out of it. We, uh, we've been increasingly vocal about this over the last uh, few months, and I've included a link in the slides for anyone interested in some, some further reading. Our, uh, our look through on the announcement is that it does seem like the inflexible and misleading EU rules will be, will be swept away, which is uh, obviously a positive. Uh, unfortunately, what isn't yet clear is uh, what will replace them. And it does look suspiciously like the, the can has just been kicked down the road to the, to the FC, FCA. Uh, I'm sure there'll be lots more to this, uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. Um, and that's, that's all from me. So I'll pass on to Richard, who has a, a few real estate updates, and then on to the interview. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Um... Let me just sort this out one sec. Okay, right. Yeah, there's a couple of real estate um, news stories this week that I thought were quite interesting. Um, so Sirius Real Estate raised £146.6 million pounds, um, earlier this week, which was um, very promising, uh, given the, the current uh, situation in the market and the difficulties companies have had in, um, in raising money. Um, we have seen a few um, real estate companies raise significant amounts of money recently, and, and this, is, this is another one. Um, the price was a sort of just under 6% discount to the to share price, um, but you can see that 14.5% of the, the capital of the company beforehand, which 
so it increases it quite quite significantly. So um, very very good result of that. We we'll just put this graph together this morning um, on their price and nav over the last five years. Um, I was uh, their, their prices in in uh, sterling and their navs in in euros, which um, so so I've um, converted that nav into into sterling, so we get an idea of what's going on here. Um, and as you can see, they've really been impacted um, with the, their price has been impacted by um, by high, higher interest rates. You see, sort of throughout 2022, it came down massively. The NAV, though, um, held up, it's been holding up pretty well. Um, and that just goes to show the, the sort of strength of their tenants and, and their sort of asset base and things like that. So if we look at what they do, um, so they they own, they well, historically own German business parts, sort of like industrial um, that kind of thing, and, and until sort of recently, so in 2021, they bought a portfolio of light industrial business parks based in the UK called the Biz Space um, portfolio. Um, that was a pretty big deal back then. That got them into the UK sector, and they've sort of been selling off assets from that that they don't like, and and, and add, add into it, they bought a few properties in the UK um, a few couple of months ago, um, and that. Across both countries, they see um, a lot of attractive acquisition opportunities, which they want. They've got this money to to put towards. Um, so in Germany, in their sort of half year results to the end of September, they've seen seven percent like for like rental growth increases, and in the UK, nine percent. So really good um, growth in rents there, uh, and they say they're on track for the tenth consecutive year of of rent roll increase of 5% or more, which obviously is really impressive as well, going through the sort of cycles. Um, and that's the, allowed them to pay uh, and increase their dividend year on year as well. So in, in this six month period, they increased it by 11%, um, which is obviously very impressive. So they've identified eight opportunities across the two countries, uh, four in Germany, four in the UK, um, eight, 85 million euros in, in Germany, it reckons it will it'll be able to pick them up for, and 45 million in the UK. Um, and these, the identified properties have asset management um, potential, basically. They see, they see these properties as maybe they've got a bit of vacancy in there that they, they, they can use their sort of asset management teams to, um, to let up. And, and push the rents on, which will obviously then push on the prices uh, and values, and, and that they see that some of these are under rented as well, so they can they can push that up as well. And they're in like the sectors like the light industrial sector, which is which has a, a supply and demand imbalance, um, where so they feel they can let up the space and push on the rents at the same time. So that's what they're looking for. Um, we'll see over the next sort of few months how quickly they deploy that money and, and, and see what, what impact that has on their portfolio from there. So that, that's um, really positive. The other one I wanted to talk about was UK Commercial Property REIT and Picton. So a couple of weeks ago, I was on the show talking about um, the approach that Picton had made to UK Commercial Property about a merger on a nav by nav basis. Um, so UK Commercial came out this week saying those talks are off. Um, their largest shareholder, which is Phoenix Life, which has actually a massive holding in, in UK commercial, says not supportive of the deal on, on the terms that have been proposed. So that's put a stop to it, basically. Um, it's interesting though, Phoenix Life does have a sort of partnership with Aberdeen, which is UK commercial's um, manager. So they have sort of some strategic partnership there. So they've obviously sort of put their foot down and say that they're not supportive of this. Picton, of considering this, they, they may come back with another deal. Um, they may just um, move away and, and, and look somewhere else, but um, we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But um, just thought we'd update on that. I think that's all the news we wanted to talk about. 